Hi everyone, this is Krishna and thanks for tuning into my podcast. Today's topic is about bhakti and devotion. What is bhakti? What is devotion? Why do we need to worship Ram? What is the correct way to worship him? Which ritual should I follow? What will I get out of it? For that matter, why should I worship anyone? And what is the true form of bhakti? I have a personal story to share here. As a child, I would always listen about many stories from my grandmother and would badger her with my questions. One fine day, I asked, why should we worship Vishnu? Who gives us money? Lakshmi. Who gives us Vidya? Saraswati. Who is the creator? Brahma. Which god is easy to please and get boons from? Shiva. Vishnu and Ram have done no miracle. Ram hasn't given any sermon like Gita. He doesn't give boons. Why should I worship him? If I want all the things that we normally want, what should we do? Why not worship the deities themselves? Why bother to worship Ram? If I worship Ram, what will I get? That is a good question. What did Shabri get? What did Kevat get? So, what is devotion? Let's look at a small story from the Ramayana. Ravan's devotion was worthy of praise. He was such an ardent follower of Lord Shiva that he would perform puja and would go on to fast for several days. He would observe strict penance and everyone knew that Ravan cannot be disturbed while he is in worship. Even if a calamity were to strike which would make Ravan lose his life, he would fearlessly continue his worship and not let it go. He went to Kailash and asked Shivji to come and settle with him in Lanka. Shivji didn't budge. So Ravan declared, I will lift the entire Kailash Parbat and take it with me to Lanka. Saying so, Ravan used his mightiest form, put down his hands to lift the Parbat. Shivji just placed one foot on the ground and look, Ravan couldn't move. His hand got stuck and now his hand is slowly getting crushed under the heavy burden of Kailash Parvat. Hence, Ravan sings the Shiv Pandav Stotram to calm down Lord Shiva and convince him to release his hand. He had a habit of forcing human beings and making them do everything as he pleases. He tried to do the same with the Almighty as well. Lord Shiva finally lifted his foot and Ravan could release his hand. He still asked for a shivling to be taken to Lanka and Shivji, still not wanting to go with Ravan, played a trick. He said, here is a shivling, take it with you. But you will have to go to Lanka by foot, carrying the shivling on your shoulders. And you cannot place it on the ground. And if you do, you shall never be able to lift it again. Ravan agreed and pledged not to keep it on the ground. It wasn't that difficult, is it? But we all know Vishnu knows how to fool the Asuras. Vishnu took the form of a farmer and begged Ravan for help. The farmer's ox and cart were stuck in a pit. The farmer begged Ravan for help. Ravan couldn't keep the shivling down. But the farmer was begging and there was no one around to help. Ravan listened to his conscience for once and kept the shivling on the ground to help the farmer and the cart. And lo, both the farmer and the cart vanished and the shivling lay on the ground, couldn't be lifted again. On the other hand, Ram is at the show. He is happy that he finally found Sita, that finally Vanvas is over, all the difficulties that he was supposed to go through are done with and now he shall be returning home to his own kingdom, to his people, to his family in Ayodhya. However, he was also half guilty that his personal war had caused so many deaths. Moreover, his guilt was that he killed a half Brahmin, Ravan. Ravan's father was a Brahmin and his mother was an Asura. You see, intercaste marriages were allowed even then. So Ram killed a Brahmin, a learned man, and he wished to seek penance. He, along with Sita, built a small shivling on the shores of the sea. With all my genuine devotion, Ram says, I believe there is Shiv in this shivling made by me 
I join my hands and ask for forgiveness. Also, I seek your blessings. That small shivling made of mud is now Rameshwaram. Ravan with all his might couldn't lift the Kailash, couldn't take the shivling and Ram makes a shivling out of mud and that is Rameshwaram. Why is there a difference? Till now, I believed that God loves all the prayers and the puja. God loves all the fasts and the upvas and the vrats. But God was clearly partial. Here's someone who is worshipping you day in and day out. And here's another man who is building a shivling out of mud. Why did Lord Shiva not take into account Ravan's devotion? At least for the sake of his feelings, Lord Shiva should have agreed to go to Lanka with Ravan. And that brings us back to the question, what is devotion? Look at the endless queues outside all the religious places. People pushing each other just for seeking God's blessings. We skip the queue, we give bribe to the pandits, then push the remaining people out of our way and we claim we got the darshan. Back to my stupid question as a child, why should we worship Vishnu? To answer my question, my grandmother replied, most of which I couldn't grasp as a child but can make a meaning now. Lakshmi, my grandmother said, is Vishnu's wife and no wife shall stay in a house where a husband doesn't stay. So naturally, she will never go to a house that doesn't respect Vishnu. Oh dear me, so if I want to be rich, I need to worship Vishnu. Saraswati, my grandmother replied, is Lakshmi's sister. Though they are not on very good terms, yet she also wouldn't like to visit a place where her sister isn't respected. Shiva's respect for Vishnu is immeasurable. Again, why would he give such a person any boon who doesn't respect Vishnu? Hmm. So the key is worshipping Vishnu, I see. He has the power, I answered. Okay, I'll chant Vishnu's name right away. My grandmother laughed and said, Vishnu is the smartest of all the gods. He isn't Bholinath. He doesn't get pleased like this. Then, how does one please Vishnu? You need to do good deeds. You cannot hurt another human being in thought, words or deeds. You should see Vishnu not only in the idols, but in all the human beings and in all the living things. You respect each and every one of them. You never lie. You don't cheat. You don't let your anger rule you. While speaking, you ensure that your speech is such that it doesn't hurt the listener's sentiments in any way. What? I was baffled. That's the only way to please Vishnu? I asked. And my grandmother nodded. It's called karma. When Vishnu is pleased with your karma, Brahmaji orders Saraswati to come to your house, Lakshmi also arrives and Shivji also places his boons. As a child, the story ended when I promised that I shall do a lot of good karma. But if we try to see it in a logical context and derive an example of an honest businessman, he doesn't dupe his customers. He doesn't think, oh, this customer has some big car, let me increase the price of my product. He honestly sells a decent product. He earns something more than money that day. It is goodwill. He begins to develop a name and people begin to trust him. If he focuses on innovation to cater to the audience needs than his short-term profits, he channelizes his energy in ideation and innovation. Thus, Saraswati blesses him. Excellence combined with the trust brings profits. Lakshmi comes in. Fame comes in and with it comes much greater power and status in the society. Isn't that what people often ask from Bhurenath? If we are to take Newton's third law of motion, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Quite seriously, we will observe a similar pattern in our lives. The moment we shed our ego, our necessities, we can see God in everyone, in the grain of rice and in the mighty eucalyptus tree. If we treat each form with love, what shall we get in return? But Dadi, not getting angry and all is very easy to say, difficult to practice. And that's why we need Ram. He is an embodiment of peace. We do 
and act as we see people around. We have come from apes, haven't we? So if we act and do as we see around, why not focus on seeing good things? Why not focus the mind on the best things? Shivji chose Ram on the basis of his karma and Ravan, though he kept worshipping, never realized that the purpose of worship is to cleanse your actions. If you don't evolve as a better person from your penance, what's the point of it all? Look at us Indians. We don't have honest politicians, honest lawyers, honest students. Most of us will have to admit, cheat somewhere or the other. Any businessman unwilling to pay the bribe? Look at the queues outside the temple. All the Ravans willing to bribe, push or even fight for God's darshan. Okay, I understand. So good deed is the key for everything. Okay, I will do good deed. Why does Swamiji worship Ram? Why do other saints worship Ram? They don't want money. They don't want fame. Then why do they worship? My grandmother replied, Because once you understand Ram, and once you know Ram, you don't need the fame and money. Earning money inevitably has stress. Fame is hard to maintain. And as is what will happen in our life, will happen. That does not mean that one shouldn't earn money. Money is required for our day-to-day -day life. Money is also required in a lot of way to fulfill many of our wishes. Money is needed. However, money shouldn't be transformed into our want. If we keep money as our need and focus our want on being a better person, we experience peace. That's why Ram was in Vanvas for 14 years and still experienced peace. Ravan enjoyed luxuries, yet he never had peace. When Ravan was about to die, Ram asked him for his last wish, to which he said, I have some unfulfilled desires. The dying Ravan tells Ram, such is our mind, such is the game. We always want, want, want and want. The want never stops. Our life, our destiny cannot be governed by us. What misery or misfortune needs to arrive, will arrive, no matter how hard we pray. Prayers are not for our miseries to disappear. They are for our strength to not waver. And when miseries don't break us, they make us better human beings. Once we can see beyond the mundane, we can see beyond the miseries and happiness, we get ultimate peace. That's what Shabri got. That's what Kevat received. When Ram within us wins the battle against the Ravan within us, every day is Diwali. So what is Bhakti? What is devotion? Bhakti is the means to find Ram. Ram is the means to find Ram. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. If you wish to send a cheering note or a feedback, kindly note down my email it's krishna thakkar 61 at gmail.com. I repeat k r i s h n a t h a k a r 61 at gmail.com. Do keep tuning into other podcasts as well. Till then, have a happy day. Bye bye.